Kia ora, and welcome to the CoreLogic Property Market Update for Putu Turangi 2022. Another month into the year, and we're seeing further evidence of the market weakening. While sales volumes increased in Hui Tanguru compared to Kohi Tatea, this was simply reflective of the usual seasonal lift between these two months. An estimated 6,200 sales occurred in Hui Tanguru, a drop of about minus 24% compared to the month's 10 year average. Of the main centres, Te Whanganui Atara volumes are impacted the most, down 37% on that long term average, while sales in Ototahi are down about 4%. Tightened credit conditions continue to play a part in restricting demand. And while it's the changes to the Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Act, introduced on One Haki Here 2021, which have hogged the headlines, we cannot forget the fact that we are also navigating the tightest loan to value ratio restrictions since they were first introduced in 2013. Since one Haratua 2021, almost all investors have required a 40% deposit. And since one Fedanga Arangi 2021, only a select few owner occupiers can secure finance with less than a 20% deposit. And this is all at a time when affordability is basically the worst it's ever been, and mortgage interest rates continue to increase. As expected, this backdrop of hard to get and more expensive credit has led to a drop in first home buyer activity, as they are the group relying on low deposit lending the most. In Hui Tanguru, first home buyer's share of sales dropped to 22.5%, a rapid fall from the record share of 26.8% they accounted for in Hong Gongoi 2021. For investors, they're also dealing with the tax changes announced a year ago, removing their ability to claim interest costs back in their tax returns. This, alongside the tightened LVR limits, has seen investor activity fall from a high of 29.1% in Putu Terangi 2021 to 23.3% last month. There may be some respite from this restrictive credit environment after the government's recent announcement softening the changes to the triple CFA. However, this is unlikely to bring back swathes of otherwise excluded demand, so it's unlikely to kick off a fresh growth phase of the market. The official crash rate forecast and its impact on mortgage interest rates could reduce the effect of any loosening of credit rules. However, this would support a softer landing for the property market as it moves into the down phase. Inflationary pressures have persisted though, and with the Russian invasion of Ukraine creating further worldwide economic tension and increasing global uncertainty, these pressures are only growing. Each revision of the OCR forecast seems to rise exponentially, which will only put the squeeze on mortgage holders more. ANZ project the OCR to hit 2% within three months. Now, despite the tight credit settings and increasing interest rate environment, we don't expect prices to fall significantly. While there tends to be a closely correlated inverse relationship when it comes to interest rates and property values, this is more so when interest rates fall and not so much when they lift. In other words, when interest rates drop, prices go up, but the same isn't necessarily true when interest rates increase. Firstly, serviceability test rates are still well above actual market interest rates, so banks have already stress tested borrowers for this. We also need to watch the health of the economy, and within it, the labour market, to assess the greater risk of a downturn. This is because the reduction in demand caused by restrictive credit doesn't necessarily have the same impact on increasing supply. That is of course, unless it's coupled with a lift in unemployment, which could lead to motivated or desperate vendors willing or pushed to sell at what might be a lower price than otherwise. One group of owners who this may not apply as consistently for though, is investors. Investors who are now dealing with the prospect of reduced capital growth alongside increasing expenses and low yields. The removal of interest cost deductibility will start to show through over the coming months. Although the phased nature of this change, as well as the bright line test encouraging longer hold periods, should temper the rush to the exit door for many investors. Nonetheless, this is one of the key factors to keep an eye on, what investors do with their portfolios. With annual rental growth now appearing to drift back to the historical average of 3% per annum, after a short period of heightened growth, landlords may have exhausted their ability to increase income to match their increasing expenses, likely anchored by tenant income. So far, the flow of listings coming to market is relatively typical for this time of the year. But of course, total supply has increased due to the slowing of sales at the other end of the pipeline. The mood or psychology of property owners will be another key factor to watch. Expectations of a drop may well contribute to the drop itself. Who knows though, if the downturn threatens the financial stability of our economy, especially given the cost of living crisis we find ourselves in, credit settings, most notably the LVR limits, could always be loosened by the Reserve Bank. 
though this hasn't even been whispered by those that matter. Make no mistake however, the power has swung toward the buyer much earlier than anyone expected. To keep on top of all the latest developments in the property market, make sure you subscribe to our weekly property market podcast and regularly visit Research News at corelogic.co.nz for all our detailed commentary. Mā te wā.